Right, this is the ECX AMP uh, MT. So basically I got this um, about a week and a half ago. Um, I've basically taken it out for a few runs, um, one in the garden and one up at the bike jumps. Um, now, I wanted to upgrade this truck, um, so what I did was I ordered a LiPo battery to replace the standard battery that comes with it. Now, obviously I'm fairly new, I've only been playing around with these RC trucks for a couple of weeks, so um, it's been a learning experience. Um, there's so much to research on the batteries and the voltages, and there's like different capacities um, and you have to put certain amps and different chargers and oh, it's, it's just it's a bit of a headache for a beginner so basically I'm going to show you this is stock car at the moment um, take the lid off at the moment it's got the default battery in there which is an ICAD battery 1800 7.2 volts um, so I'm going to be replacing this stock battery, which has an EC3 clip, which I found out, which is slightly different to all the other cars. Um, so I'm going to be replacing this with a, a LiPo battery. So this one's going to come out. Um, and the LiPo battery I ordered is basically, come out of the packet, it's a Venom battery. Um, move the car out of the way a minute. Venom battery. It's 5,000 milliamps, 20C, 7.4 volts. So basically it's got two cables that come on it, um, like a connector cable and this is the balance cable. Um, so it comes with a few converters in here, so for anyone who's like me who's just buying a battery for the first time trying to put it in this car, there's a few things that you have to know. Um, so one of them is you can put LiPo in the car, that's great, but apparently there's no low voltage protection to stop the battery going under a certain capacity which could damage the battery or the car. So you have to get, along with the battery, uh, you don't have to, but recommended, a little alarm which connects up, um, like a voltage alarm that I'll show you in a minute, but basically that goes off, makes a beep when it gets to a certain voltage. I think I've got it set like 3.4 off. 3.5 volts, but I'll show you that. So that's going to go in the car with the battery. Now to connect it all up, you've got the connectors that come with it. They're a bit of a pain um, because they're really hard. Once they're on, they're really hard to get off. But I'll put those down. Um, various different types, like I think there's RT60 and EC3. But what I also purchased to make it a lot easier was one of these. It's a little EC3 connector to charging cable um, for the charger. Now, so I've got one of those, little arm, the battery, and the standard clips that come with the battery. Um, right, what else do you need? So, it's not cheap. You also need, well, I recommend it, a LiPo guard. Basically, when the battery's charging, it goes in here. I don't know why. Makes me a bit paranoid because if the battery catches fire, blows up, explodes, I don't know. Are they prone to exploding? But this goes in here when it's charging um, and it should keep it safe. So, just a note with the battery when you get, I've got a Venom battery, but when I got the battery, um, I could register with the warranty. Now, it was a bit awkward to try and find the serial number. It was, I managed to find it. It's just, hidden on here on the end so to activate the warranty you pop this number in here then also it asks you for like a part number or serial number that's the serial number but the part number is here on the barcode just above the barcode so note for anyone who orders one of these batteries that's what you have to do to register so got all of that now we need a charger so I bring the charger into this scene This is the IMAX uh, BC AC V2. Sounds like an aeroplane. Um, this charger cost me about £50, um, UK pounds. Uh, battery was £25. Connectors, this was about three, four pounds. This was about three pounds. Um, and this was a couple of pounds. So, all in all, you're looking at, obviously, 80 odd quid, math isn't brilliant, but <laughs> around that sort of price, 
give or take posters and packaging. Um, so all of that to replace just that, which is a bit of a pain. But what you can do is obviously you can use these if you upgrade your car moving forwards. You can put these parts into that car. Now, with the charger itself, to connect up, this is a whole minefield. I don't know whether to do a separate video or put it in this one. But if I zoom in on this, I'll go through the basics. So let's get that set. Here we go. Right, so I pre programmed it into the memory, but what I'll do is there's lots of buttons. It's the manual's not very good. I recommend watching YouTube videos. But basically what you do is if I press enter, it allows you to set um, a voltage, well amperage, sorry. So I looked up for my battery, which is 5020C, 7.4. You want to have that set at 5. So I've set that to 5, but then you hit enter. These scroll through, that selects the mode, and that basically sets enter. You'll see, so that's 5 amps, 7.4 volts, and a 2 cell battery charging a LiPo. So that's what I want to do for this. Hit enter, says the number of cells, and then the voltage. So that's basically to charge the battery. Now there's different modes. This is LiPo balance charge. You've got LiPo charge. So you'll see the settings are stayed the same throughout. So that's what you want to have it on when you connect your battery in. Um, there's other options and there are a lot of options. So this is just very high top level um, just to go through for anyone who's just got it. That will charge it. That's the right setting for my battery. Plug it in and I'll show you the connectors in a minute to do so. Um, there's other modes in here, obviously fast charge, don't think we're going to use that, but you get the drift, charges it slightly quicker. I think it's going to be for about an hour to charge the normal battery, but it should switch off once it's done. LiPo storage, if you're not going to use your battery, from what I've seen and read, you basically put it in this storage mode, um, and it will drop the battery to a suitable level to put it in your cupboard. So obviously a fully charged battery I think is about 4.2. Um, and basically this will drop it down to, I think you can change it in the settings, but it will drop it down to something like between 3 and 3.5, something like that. Just so if you're not using it for long periods of time, you should sort of um, put it into storage mode. Um, other than that, there's, you could discharge. I don't know why you'd use this other than storage, but you can set a certain discharge rate in here. Um, and balance charge, again, like I said earlier, that's set the same as the charge, so pretty much leave that. You can program it in as well by going through here, choosing your type of battery, different options. Um, you can go into here, you can go into settings, and you can save all that into the pre-programmed memory. Um, but what I'll do is I'll come out of that. So that's the charger. There's different connectors on the charger itself, as you can see on the side. Um, you, you the balance cables go in on the right. My one's three pins, so that's the top right hand corner. Then you've got the plus and the minus for the power connectors. Um, as you see, one's red, one's black. So they need to be connected up. Um, so, if I slide that to one side, zoom back out again. Let's look at the battery and all the connectors. Right, so, my battery, like I said earlier, 5020C 7.4, balance cable, and this little connector on the end. So I need to connect this into the charger. Um, so the balance cable will go in, like I said, click it into there in the top right hand corner. Now I need to use one of the adapters to connect it into the plus and the minus. Now the box comes with a whole variety of different, um, different pieces. So oh, I'll show you. Actually you'll see a box full of stuff. Um, it depends obviously on your car, but for this car I want to use these pins. So these come with the charger, so plus and minus, so red into red, and then self-explanatory, black into black. So that connects up there. So, now to connect this to this, this won't work, so you need a connector. Um, that's where the one I purchased comes into play. So what happens is, I've taken one, i got two, so this one's come out of the packet from earlier. This is basically, if you can see, is a connector that connects up to the charger in that 
T shape. So that would go into here, like so. And then, let me just turn this off. Then, that's my EC3 adapter. So now on here, I need to connect my EC3 adapter that came with the car. Uh, da -da -da, like so. Now, the reason why I got this adapter was because you can fit one of these plastic T adapters in that goes straight into the charger, but from experience for plugging them in, once this connects on, it's a pain to push in, that's connected, but it, is, it clips both sides. It, it's a killer to get these back off. So for ease of use, if I just, with my connector, it's EC3 now to EC3, so I can plug it in the car straight away, standard EC3 to EC3, and that's cool, and then I can plug it straight into the charger and just connect those up. Um, so what I would do in this instance, obviously plug it in, got my settings, obviously plug the power lead out for the moment, I'll do it later. Um, put this inside my guard bag, chuck it in, plug it in, turn it on, let it charge for an hour. This should sort of, I don't know if it beeps because I've not done it yet, but it'll beep or it turns off. That's done. Um, job done. Say so we've got a fully charged battery, hour later come back, so unplug this, take it out of the bag, disconnect these, chuck that to one side, chuck the bag, got the battery good to go. Now we want to chuck it back in the car. So, standard battery comes with the car, connects in, but we're not going to use that today. We're going to use the LiPo, so this would be charged. Um, obviously, you just connect the EC3 to EC3, and this particular battery fits snugly in, don't need any sort of adapters, it basically connects up and fits straight in as per the normal battery. Da -da -da. So there's not enough power in this one to probably drive, but you'll hear it. It comes to life. So that's the works that I bought. Um, now this is where the um, voltage alarm comes in. This connects to the balance lead, which was that white cable here. Um, so it goes on here. Make sure I get it in the right way. I believe it's the there. You go. So it flashes around. Hopefully you can see that. Let me just zoom in again. Do, do, do. I hope this helps other people like me that just bought the car for the first time trying to work out what they're supposed to do with it to upgrade it. Right, so that's flashing. Let's turn around the right way. That's flashing 38.1, which is what the battery, I think, each shell's individually at. Um, so basically, it's a two cell battery. It's showing all right. So what we want to do is if you press that button at the top, it says you see here 36, 37, 38 off. This is when you can set the warning. So you go down to 27, 28. So I'm going to leave it on 35. So I believe once it's fully charged, it should be something like 4.2. So once it runs down to um, 35, which was obviously the setting I set it to, and it just scrolls through, it rotates through everything that will start beeping. Um, obviously you can tuck that with the cables, you can tuck it under there like so, chuck that down, obviously stick your lid on, clip it back in, put your clips back in and then, sorry no one saw that because it was zoomed up, chuck your lid back on, zoom out so you can see it. Um, Yep, so it's all in the car, it's all back together, chuck the lid back on, and then you're ready to go racing. So my next video will be, obviously, I'll take it out with the LiPo battery. I'll try to do a comparison between using the standard battery um, over here and using the LiPo that's in the car. Um, hopefully it's a lot faster, and hope you found the video useful, um, and see you soon. Cheers, bye.